This is a terrifying creature from an alien planet. Through cell fusion replication, it can take on the appearance of anyone. Because of this characteristic, the monster is difficult to kill. In this episode, let's revisit the horror classic The Thing. In the vast Antarctic ice field, a snowmobile driving on top of the ice. The members of the vehicle belong to a Norwegian research station. A few days ago, they received a strange radio signal. The signal was sent from here. The car followed the signal. Suddenly the ice broke up. The snowmobile fell down a crevasse in the glacier. Fortunately, the car got stuck in the crevasse. When the panic station members turned on their lights, they were dazzled by the scene before them. Dr. Halverson traveled to Columbia to solve the mystery and found paleontologist Kate. Dr. Halverson brought news that aroused Kate's great interest. After over 10,000 miles, Kate followed the doctor to the South Pole. Under the guidance of the staff, Kate entered the glacial cave, the site of a huge, strange-looking spaceship was parked there. According to their research, the doctor told Kate that this huge thing appeared at least 100,000 years ago, and the signal they received was sent by it. So who made the ship? Does it belong to Earth? No one can explain it. Outside the glacial cave, they made another important discovery. A strange creature was sealed beneath the ice. Its giant form looms large. The doctor had the team cut the ice that encased the unknown creature. After returning to the station, the doctor was extremely excited. He was anxious to find out if this strange creature belonged to Earth. He then asked the station manager to get an electric drill to drill an ice sample. As the drill was positioned deeper and deeper, it soon reached the creature's body. They then carefully removed a tissue sample. Through DNA identification, the doctor was surprised that the creature did not belong to the Earth. Hearing this, everyone cheered. In the night, everyone celebrated this great discovery but did not know that danger was approaching them. The ice in the storage room was slowly thawing. Jameson saw tiny cracks in the ice and felt it could break at any moment, just as he was about to leave. There was a loud bang, and a huge black shadow broke through the ice and disappeared through the roof into the night. The people who heard the news came to the warehouse, looking at the broken ice. A bad feeling loomed over everyone. The doctor rushed to organize the staff to look around for signs of the monster. They found the killed sled dog in the kennel. What they did not expect was that the monster did not leave. It hid in a dark corner and let out a strange low roar. As expected, the monster's tentacles popped like lightning and struck the man through the chest. His scream broke the silence of the night. When everyone arrived, the monster was still devouring the bodies of the team member. Seeing this horrible scene, the crowd fired, but to no avail. In desperation, they set the whole house on fire. Under the fire, the monster soon ceased to move. The doctor, of course, will not let go of this great opportunity to study. In the autopsy, he found that the victim had quickly fused with the monster, almost becoming one with the beast. The bone-setting steel plate inside him strangely came outside. What shocked them more was that the cells were still active. Although the monster was dead, and it is still devouring human cells and then mimicking replication. In other words, the monster may eventually become the victim's appearance. This shocking discovery sent chills down their spines. Th the next day, the helicopter is ready to evacuate the base with a few wounded. Meanwhile, Kate found some bloody metal dentures in the bathroom. Then she saw blood in the bathroom. Kate suddenly realized that something was wrong. She rushed outside and tried to stop the helicopter already in the air. And at this time in the helicopter, a team member mutated. From the body stretched out countless tentacles. The plane went out of control and crashed into a nearby mountain. What's worse? The storm is approaching. The radio is seriously jammed. Cannot communicate with the outside world. Kate suddenly appeared when everyone was at a loss. She said the monster could copy human. This terrible news made everyone instantly nervous. Kate then took out the dentures. Because the monster can't copy inorganic matter, it spits out the dentures. Just now, someone secretly cleaned up the blood stains in the bathroom. In other words, the monster was probably still hiding among them. But everyone didn't believe it. So they turned around and left. Kate and Juliet, the geologists, were the only ones left in the room. She said she had seen Colin clean the bathroom. The two prepared to hide the car keys to stop the monster from escaping. While Kate was looking for the keys, Juliet's strange scream suddenly came behind her. It turns out that Juliet is the one who was parasitized by the monster. Seeing this horrible scene, Kate rushed to escape from the house. The monster was chasing after her. Carl was in front of Kate and was pierced by the tentacles. Hearing the screams, the teammates brought in flamethrowers to burn the monster. The monster was covered in fire and was soon burned to death. Together, 
They burned the monster and the bodies of their dead companions. The team finally believed Kate's words. The monster can live in anyone's body, so everyone must cooperate with the inspection and not leave. At that moment, two figures came from the darkness of the night. Kate saw their plane crash with her own eyes, and one can't help but wonder. Some even wanted to burn them on the spot, to prevent wrongful death. Kate suggested isolating the two. When everyone had their blood oxygen tested, everything would be revealed. But the sudden fire destroyed the lab. Apparently this was done by the monster on purpose. Kate had to find another way. She told everyone to open their mouths. Because the monster can't replicate inorganic material. If someone has dental fillings, they can be ruled out first. Two of the team members who have passed the inspection went to find the survivors of the crash to check, but the two who had been quarantined had long since disappeared. Kate soon got the news, as the group was at their wit's end. Breaking glass came from outside. When they exited the house, they encountered two men who had disappeared. The station chief ordered the team to burn Carter and Jameson to death. In the nick of time, Jameson shot first. The fuel tank was also pierced, and then an explosion occurred. Then everyone calmed down. Kate knows that the monster is still hiding among them. The unconscious station manager was helped into the lounge. His arm suddenly snapped off and turned into a horrific face-hugger-like creature that pounced on one of the team members. The station chief on the ground also began to mutate, and a tentacle reached out from his body. Under the monster's frenzied attack, the team members were killed and injured. Even the gunshot could not cause substantial damage to it. The monster crawled toward the man in a bizarre position. Soon their faces fused. Kate found the flamethrower, but the monster has escaped. In case of mutation, she had to burn the bodies of her teammates. That's when the doctor's screams came from the hallway. The two survivors were heavily armed and started searching. Suddenly a face hugger crawled over. Carter hit it with an axe, and one bug turned into two. Kate immediately burned it with a flamethrower. They continued to search the room carefully. In the darkness, the monster suddenly appeared. Carter panicked and fled to another room. The horrible monster slowly followed him in. His hiding place is unfortunately discovered. In the nick of time, Kate arrives with a flamethrower in her arms. Under the flames, the monster is completely burned to death and turned into a pile of charcoal. However, it did not end there. The doctor drove a car and left the base in a hurry. The consequences would be unthinkable if the monster escaped from the South Pole. To stop the catastrophe, they chased out in a snowmobile. Inadvertently, she saw Carter's earrings. Soon they arrive at the spot where the alien ship was found. Along the glacial cave, they came to the ship. And this time the ship has been started. Kate accidentally fell. When she awakens, she finds herself inside the ship. She is so fascinated by the strange equipment around her that she forgets the danger is behind her. The monster in the form of the doctor slowly appears and rushes forward with its mouth wide open. She escaped by running into a small space. The frightened Kate saw the grenade she had dropped not far away. She crawled over to it as fast as she could. She got the grenade and got her foot caught at the same time. The monster opened its mouth to devour her. Little did it know that a deadly grenade would greet it. With a loud bang, the monster was blown to pieces. The ship's engines slowly died out. The crisis was finally over. They were ready to evacuate the damn place. Just as Kate was about to board the snowmobile, she noticed that Carter's earrings had disappeared. This means that the monster most likely parasitizes the man before her. Kate didn't hesitate to pull the trigger. He was left to struggle in flames. At dawn, a helicopter slowly landed on the base. The pilot was stunned by the horror of the situation. He screamed for his life, but all he got in return was a few bullets. The man who fired the shots was a survivor of the base. A dog ran out of the house as he checked on the pilot. It was his dog. The problem is that the dog died last night. The man immediately realizes it's a monster and says nothing to let it go. They fly the helicopter and shoot wildly at the sled dog. But unfortunately, they don't hit it. This is the end of the thing, leaving a big question mark on the plot. Remember to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.